Brett getting stronger near the Lesser Antilles on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. Now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 22nd. The second named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season, Brett, is nearing the Lesser Antilles, Barbados, uh, St. Lucia, Martinique and Dominica, all in with a chance of tropical storm force winds over the next couple of days. Elsewhere, no other named storms are currently active, but plenty could be on the way. Day 22 of Atlantic hurricane season, and Brett of course is quite clear to see there, and a 90% area of interest behind it as well, which is tracking generally westwards at the moment, but we expect it will curve a little bit further north of where Brett is going. Brett itself will end up in the Caribbean Sea. Day 40 of Pacific hurricane season, and we've got two areas of interest marked low and moderate at the moment and we expect that these chances will gradually rise it looks like we will finally get our first storms of the pacific hurricane season and in the western pacific we still have one area of interest uh, over there in the philippine sea still a big question mark over to what exactly happens over there in the next seven days but it does look like we will see some kind of development uh, occur over there later on and in the Indian Ocean, what's left of Bipo Joy, which we were still tracking yesterday, perhaps you could still make a case for it being there today, a tiny little blob of convection squarely over the central north part of India denotes where that system, what's left of it, is. Satellite imagery of the last 24 hours shows this, you can quite clearly see all three tropical waves in the Atlantic if you count Brett as that because it being a mature tropical cyclone and off the Indian Ocean coastline that's where a lot of rainfall is occurring right now in the Bay of Bengal. Looking in more detail at the Eastern Pacific satellite and you can see that the, uh, the stage is getting set for these potential tropical cyclones, lots of uh, thunderstorms blowing up over the Central American uh, peninsula and a little tropical disturbance down there towards the southeast. Now that could end up being something, we'll have to see whether it comes from that or from something else. Now over to the Atlantic and you can see in the main development region quite clear to see both of these two systems. Brett on the left hand side which is throwing up lots of convection on the western side but its structure itself isn't so good. And the system behind it which to be honest with you looks better right now. Um, lacking a little bit rotation, just a little bit needed to get to tropical cyclone state as I feel. And I think we will get two TCs active at the same time in the main development region in June. I'm not sure when the last time that happened was and you can see Brett's relation to those islands it is getting closer gradual movement towards the west will put those lesser Antilles in in harm's way with winds nearing hurricane strength possible sea surface temperatures are still very warm off the coast of Mexico up and above 30 degrees Celsius so that's a hotbed of activity possibly there that we could see Warm water is extending up to the Hawaiian Islands now as well, just about getting to 26 degrees. The Atlantic, a few hot spots near the Bahamas and on the southern coast of Cuba, up and above 30 degrees Celsius. Over in the main development region of the Atlantic where Brett is, those temperatures are starting to warm up as it gets close to Barbados and Martinique, uh, getting up to around 29 degrees Celsius. Further out to sea, temperatures are getting up there as well. Western Pacific really getting a surge now in temperatures further north off the coast of Japan, a few little spots now of 26 degrees Celsius water as well. Near the Philippines temperatures getting up there once more 30 to 32 degrees Celsius particularly near Luzon and looking very good across the whole tropical western Pacific. Indian Ocean looks like it's pretty much recovered from the recent cyclones, Bay of Bengal more so with those warmer temperatures 30 to 31 degrees Celsius although the window on the first part of the season appears to be closing. Southwest Indian Ocean it actually recovered slightly, I think, in one or two spots, but of course we are in the off-season there. Same for the Australian region, which is 6 degrees Celsius off the coast of Australia itself, and the South Pacific, which is staying pretty similar over the last few days. 
And the sea surface temperature anomalies show where we are compared to average. The Atlantic is well above average at the moment, particularly further east, which possibly helps these systems develop, uh, up to about 3 degrees above average. In the eastern Pacific, along the equ equator equatorial line there, the El Nino effect starting to appear with really warm temperatures there, uh, near the uh, coast of Mexico where the tropical systems form. It's about 2 to 3 degrees above average as well. Rest of the Atlantic also looking good, western Pacific slightly above 2. Oceanic heat content looking really good in the Western Caribbean with very high amounts now and extending partially into the Gulf of Mexico and around the Florida Strait. Eastern Pacific also looking decent, certainly better than what we were looking at last year with a line of systems there, uh, not systems, but a line of energy there extending from east to west. Western Pacific also looking stunning right now for oceanic heat content. GFS model for the next five days takes breadth through those islands as expected and forecasted from the National Hurricane Center and then gradual weakening will take place probably as it's passing through the islands. Now these small systems that appear to be weak on the face of it don't underestimate it. Let's remember storms like Erica that happened in 2015 that was retired for insane amounts of rainfall that it occurred over those islands. Not saying this will be the same but just not to underestimate the storm. The system behind it as well, a brief tropical cyclone there and a next name storm if that forecast comes to pass. Eastern Pacific looking out for one or maybe two systems to form here. Uh, first of all, both of them towards the end of that five day period and they both form almost at the same time. You can see them there forming right near the end of that five day period. The first one off the coast of southern Mexico around uh, Guerrero province I think it is there and the one further east which forms in a very far easterly position uh, not far from the border between Costa Rica and Nicaragua. Both of them get there getting to tropical storm status. And the Western Pacific looking out for a very broad system probably now in the next five days maybe and it starts to gather pace towards the end of that loop. Looks like there might be two or more low pressure systems that are competing there to try and become the dominant one and that's why there's a lot of uncertainty as to what happens. Eastern parts of the Philippines there could get adverse weather uh, through the weekend into early next week as a result of all of this. Unlikely that it will pass through the islands but can't be ruled out. Precipitation expectations then for Tropical Storm Brett aren't particularly high, uh, but they are still significant in a few spots, particularly wherever it makes landfall. That would be quite obvious, but around the southern coast of Dominica at the moment and the northern coast of Martinique, looks like that's where we're expecting we're homing in on the highest rainfall amounts being and possibly a landfall location. Rainfall amounts there getting up to around 5 inches, which is 125 millimetres. On Barbados, getting up to just above 2 inches there, 50 millimetres, and actually some isolated values of higher near the coast of Puerto Rico, getting up to 5 inches there as well on the southeastern part of the island. Storm will continue through and will not produce much rain elsewhere. I think the rain over there in Jamaica and Cuba is incidental from other systems. Longer range looking at these two Pacific storms and they get pretty beastly. Certainly the first one, very broad and large and category 2 status there at least I would say as it skirts up towards the northwest passing by the Baja California Peninsula. The second system is a lot more reserved, it does reach a first peak and then it weakens a little bit again probably because of the influence from the much larger hurricane in front of it and then it weakens to barely a tropical storm by the time we get to the end of that 10 day period on that loop. Day 5 to 10 in the Western Pacific and we watch for this very broad system that starts to tighten up as it gets to higher latitudes and there it is starting on its way towards the north and then the northeast and a recurvature job going on there becoming a category 1 typhoon. Not fully sure of where it's going towards the end of that 10 day period the steering appears to be a bit weak but headed in the general direction of the Japanese islands so perhaps something to watch out for there for the main islands. That's all the serious stuff done with. You can take a look at the Force 13 merch store, scan the barcode, and it'll take you straight there. We have all of our usual items. I like the hoodie sometimes, especially in the colder months. And we also have our Still Waiting for Hone t-shirt. I unfortunately still don't have one yet myself, but I think that might change soon. 
In the silly range then, there is no sign of Hone still, just in case you were wondering, but this system, the second one that we were watching, redevelops, and there it goes, and look at it go! Getting to a strong Category 4 probably there as it approaches the western coast of Mexico. Uh, so that is a fascinating look there uh, to that potential tropical cyclone that redevelops later on in its life now that the other system is out of the way. Well, that would certainly be making the most use of the current conditions if I say so. Um, that would be a bit of a roaring start, a late one, but a roaring one in the Eastern Pacific. That Westpac storm, it is actually a landfall by the looks of things, not far from Tokyo as a substantial Category 1 typhoon, but it is very far out in the model run. Of course, we're talking 3rd, 4th of July, and right at the end of that run, another system, a very large one, forms to the northeast of the Philippine Islands. Not much confidence in any of this happening yet. Of course, we still don't have the initial disturbance at the moment, so I would uh, cast major doubt over whether this forecast comes true. You can talk about all of this and all Tropical Weather Chat on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13. You can also discuss more general things on there as well, with over 3,400 uh, community members all around the world. On this day in 1978, a powerful Hurricane Carlotta was active in the Eastern Pacific in the early days of the GOES satellites. We also had the remnants of Polly, which were speeding up towards the Aleutian Islands um, as a remnant. It previously moved through Japan there, and I think it peaked as a strong tropical storm, if I remember rightly. I could be wrong there. Carlotta was at its peak intensity, getting to Category 4 status. Exactly how far into Category 4? That remains a bit of a mystery due to a little bit of satellite imagery uh, being lacking. Back to today though, we're in code blue and on the lookout for storm number 25 of the year. Will it be Cindy? That's the next name in the Atlantic Basin. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Adrian, still waiting for the number one. And in the Central Pacific, we are still waiting for Hone, and that wait's been going on for nearly four years. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Talim, and in the North Indian Ocean, we are looking out for Tej. Not long left for the Indian Ocean to chalk up another storm in the southwestern region before the names roll over on July 1st. Until then, the next name is Gizani. In the Australian region, it's Jasper and the South Pacific, Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.